Hello everybody, my name is Mahut Despande, and uh, in this video I want to introduce you guys to uh, face recognition and uh, kind of some of the topics that we'll be uh, discussing over these next few videos. So, face recognition is, is the step above face detection. Uh, after detecting a face in an image, the next natural question to ask is, uh, to whom does this face belong to? And this is a question that face detection tries to answer. So with face detection, we're trying to answer the question of, you know, whose face, whose face is in this image? So that's a question that we are going to be, you know, answering with, with face recognition. I and mean, this is different than face detection, because with uh, face detection, we're just concerned with is there a face in this image or, or not? Face recognition is more specific, and you'll see uh, that actually face detection is the first step in face recognition, but face recognition is a more specific question that we're asking, that is whose face uh, is in this image. And so to answer this question, we can't just hard code uh, all of the, the values that we want in there. In fact, we have to use machine learning and artificial intelligence uh, to, and we have to construct an AI that can, you know, that given lots of labeled examples of people's faces, it can take a new face and say, well, this face, it belongs to so-and-so, for example. So that's uh, what we're going to be uh, doing. And we actually have to, because of the way how face recognition is so specific, we can't do something like what we did in face detection and just use a pre-built model because that might change depending on whose face, you know, we want to include in our data set. And I'm going to be talking about the data set uh, that we're going to be using late a bit in, in a future video. Uh, so just keep that in mind. So uh, anyway, with, with, you know, if we want to build this AI, we need lots of labeled training examples. And so what are these, you know, examples? So with these examples, these training examples, we need an image and then a label. And this image is the actual face, and this label is the person who's depicted in that, whose face is depicted in that image. And this is really all we need. They're just of this form, image, and label. And, you know, so there's kind of two phases that we need for this. And right now, this is, I'm going to list this out. There's the training phase. There's the training phase, and then there's the testing phase. And so we're going to have to you know, deal with both phases, actually. So with the training phase, we have lots of examples like these. And so what we need to do for the training phase is to first run face detection. Face detection here. And that will actually identify the region of this image that is the face and you know we've already discussed face detection so I won't really talk too much about that we just use exactly the same stuff that we uh, have been using with face detection just run uh, the cascade classifier on this input image and then we get you know the results of the face back and so we do that for all of these uh, training examples so this is for all I should say this for all training examples so we do we, we do this training has to go across all of the examples so for each example we run face detection is the first step the second step and probably the most important step is to capture to capture features of that face so that's probably the most important uh, step there is one when you actually detect the face we have to detect features about the face because remember with face recognition this is a more specific uh, more specific question that we're asking rather than face detection and so we have to we can't just use those same hard features that we were talking about because those are meant to just detect general faces they're not meant to that you can't really use them to detect a specific person's face and so we have to capture some features that can help us uniquely identify uh, different faces and so that's where you know this training or this step two kind of comes along 
And so once we've captured features for that particular face, we have to store these features. We have to store it with the label. And so you know, once we've captured these features, then we can store them and use the you know and use the label. And so that when we get in new training examples and new images, we can compare them to the stuff that we already have seen and just take the label of the face that's closest to uh, closest to whatever the new input image is. And so speaking about um, speaking about getting new examples, let's uh, talk about testing. And so testing is, you know, for new images. And, and I'm just going to abbreviate image as IMG. So for new images, uh, we, what we have to do is, first of all, we have to run face detection again. So we want to detect the face. And we can, if, there's, if the image has multiple faces, that's perfectly fine. We will just detect all of them. So with the second step, uh, what we have to do is capture features of all faces. Because remember, in the training examples, there's generally generally just going to be one face per image, and that just makes it simpler when we're dealing with training data because we have control over our training data. But with testing data, we don't really know how many faces can be in a particular image, and actually it turns out it's not going to matter. And so we want to capture features uh, of all of the faces. Then after we have those features using the same algorithm, then we can actually compare compare to training data, or to training features, I should say. And then the last step down here is the coolest step, and that's the prediction. And so once we have the features of all the faces in our uh, image, in our, te in our uh, testing image, then we can compare those features with faces that we've previously seen uh, from the training phase, and we can find the, the closest image and once we have that closest image, then we can just take the same label that's from the closest image and say, well, then this is what the image should, uh, this is, you know, the person that's depicted in this image. That's a person that's depicted uh, for, for that face. And so that's something that we can uh, do in, in OpenCV fairly simply. And with, along with the prediction, we also get something called like a confidence value. And that just, you know, intuitively, that's how, how confident is our uh, is our AI? Is it, you know, kind of unsure about this, or is it really confident that this, that this face is belongs to this person? So anyway, anyway, this is stuff that OpenCV can actually just give us when you, uh, when we train our machine learning model or AI, you can just give it a new input image and call, or you call function on it, and then with you with a new input image, and it will return you the label and the confidence. So that's not. Something that we really have to um, we really have to worry about too much, but probably the the key step that I want to be focusing on is this step right here. That is capture features of all faces, or capture capturing these facial uh, features. Because like I mentioned before, face recognition is more specific than detection, and so we have to be smart about which features we capture and how we capture. Uh, the features of of the face, because you know if you are going into any kind of data mining or data science or anything like that, um, you're going to learn very quickly that it's all about using good features. If you use if you have good features and a relatively simple machine learning algorithm or something like that, then you're generally going to do better than if you have really bad features and you try to compensate by using some really complicated over the top. Uh, algorithm. So, capturing these features um, is, is ca this capture and analysis of the features is probably the most important step uh, in in face recognition. And so, in the next few videos, we're going to be discussing uh, a couple different ways that we can do that. And probably the majority of the ways 
that we do this are centered around this topic called uh, dimensionality reduction. And it sounds really, uh, it sounds much scarier than it actually is. And I'm going to give you a more intuitive understanding of dimensionality reduction uh, in the next video, actually. But I'm just going to stop right here and uh, do a quick recap. So with face recognition, uh, we want to answer the question, uh, whose face is in this image? And that's more specific than face detection, because face detection is just, is there a face in this image? And so... To answer this question, we can't really just hard code all of the values in there, right? We have to use some kind of artificial intelligence and machine learning to kind of identify the features of a particular face, given lots of training examples, and then given a new image, we compare it with those previous examples that we've seen before, and then can make a prediction. And so what I mean by examples, um, as I've shown here, examples are just um, a, a tuple containing the image of the face and then the label and the label in this case is the name of the person and so given lots of these we can go through the training phase and apply face detection to identify the face more specifically and then capture features of that particular face and then store those features with the label name or the person name so then you have this giant you know data model that has the name of the person and then the uh, the face and well like multiple examples so you, there's you can have uh, you can have the same person but multiple faces and we're going to see that that is going to happen with like the Yale uh, data set that we'll be using you might be like a person that's smiling frowning the same person is winking the same person is you know you just kind of collect different images different uh, facial expressions from the same person but we're going to get into the data set a bit later and then so anyway that's the training phase and then with the testing phase when you get a new image, you basically run this, the first two steps are the same. You run face detection and get the features. You have to make sure you get the features using the same algorithm as when you trained. And then once you have those features, then you can compare with all of the examples that you've seen before and then make a prediction. So that's just kind of face recognition um, in, in, in a nutshell. And the most important step of this is to capture these features. How do we get these features given a, a subsection of an image that contains a face? So that's probably the most important portion and that's the portion that we're going to be focusing on. And a lot of the techniques that deal with that actually discuss dimensionality reduction. And so I'm going to give you an intuitive understanding of dimensionality reduction actually in the next video. So so this is just an overview of face recognition. And then in the next video to kind of introduce the two of the algorithms that we're going to use for uh, capturing these features. I'm going to discuss dimensionality reduction in the next video.